many types of, of, of wool are used in, in yarns and fabrics. And we looked at that extensive list of the different types of breeds. And since there's a bunch of different breeds that produce wools, they do have different characteristics. And, you know, really with the exception of Merino and maybe Shetland wool, label on wool products really state that information, right? They don't tell us what the fiber is. They just say it's wool, right? So as we know, wool legally includes fibers um, from animals like sheep, um, but it also include, includes angora and cashmere goats and camel alpaca, uh, llama and vicuna uh, as well. So those are, are other categories of wool. So shirt wool just comes from a live sheep, of course, we've seen that. Um, and um, Pull wool is taken from the pelts of meat type sheep. So we talked about that with lamb. We only talked about them in terms of shearing in the last tab, but there are some chemical components that um, meat producers, um, you know, people that raise lambs, raise sheep for lamb's meat, there's some chemicals that they put in the feed so that the hair just kind of falls off um, as well. So, um, so shear wool comes from the live sheep and recycled wool um, is re recovered from worn apparel and cutters, cutter scrap, right? So one of the words that we do hear in terms of wool, we hear the word lamb's wool, right? And in the previous tab of the lecture, we talked about how a lamb is a, is a, a sheep that's less than a year old, but lamb's wool specifically is from a, a sheep that is less than seven months old. So Basically, the sheep is born, and uh, when it grows to seven months, that's the first time the hair is at long enough length to grow, um, to, to, be, to be cut. And this wool is finer and softer. So the great part, uh, what makes lamb's wool so distinctive is that it only has one cut in, right? So the, the end of the hair, right, has come out of the skin, um, and it's only been cut one time. So it, it is a, a much finer, finer wool. Baby, basically think of it like baby hair, right? Like the hair of a, of a, of a seven month old child. The texture of that hair is much different. And as soon as you cut it one time, that texture, that texture change. So, um, so wool is often blended with less expensive fibers to reduce the cost of fabric or to extend, extend the chew. So there actually are some actual classifications um, that the Federal Trade Commission defines um, in terms of labeling wool garments. And that's what we're going to talk about next. So the first term is virgin wool and virgin wool means wool that's never been processed. Now, when I say never been processed, it's not the same as raw or grease wool. So raw or grease wool um, or even raw or grease wool, remember, were are, are things that haven't been processed yet. They still have all the dirt and grime and stuff in it. Right. So raw, it's not raw or grease wool or it's not clean or scoured wool, which just pulls out that grease. Raw wool means it hasn't been processed into any with, with any type of finishing or it hasn't been spun. It's just gone through the process of cleaning, grading and sorting. So that that single term wool applies to virgin wool and it's really helpful as a as a marketing tool. The next term is is wool and wool We've heard it a couple of times, but these are these are the terms that are used for marketing pur purposes. Wool or new wool or wool fibers. Um, the term wool it, uh, refers to uh, those new fibers, but also fibers that are reclaimed from scraps, right? So from broken threads or the short fibers that are removed in that in that sorting process, right? When they're separating the se sections of fiber into into different categories. So. Wool, in terms of marketing, um, is is new wool that's been sorted, and it's also those reclaimed fibers that happen in the sorting process. So think of it this way: everything's been sorted, um, and, and there's still some scraps on the floor, and that also is considered wool. And often that wool is what is used to th that is used to blend with other fibers to create to create blended yarns. 
The third type is is recycled wool and recycled wool is important in in the textile industry. Um, recycled wool comes in in two forms. Um, first, uh, there are scraps of new woven fabrics that are shredded back to their fiber state and, re and reused. And this happens um, just for the sustainability portion, we'll talk about sustainability, but just scraps, the end pieces, what's left over are are, are shredded back to their fiber state and, and reused. The other type is called shoddy wool and shoddy wool is truly sustainable because shoddy wool comes from old apparel that or rags or blankets or textiles that are clean, sorted and shredded. And recycled wool is often blend it in with that new wool uh, and it's it's respun in, into new fabrics and you know the the thing with recycled wool is sometimes these fibers are are damaged by the the mechanical action that what's needed to get it back to the fiber the fiber estate to the fiber state and sometimes these fibers aren't as resilient strong or durable um, as new wool as a new wool garment but the fabrics that are made from them perform really well. So sometimes the word the words recycled wool on a label doesn't refer to the quality of the fiber, but it refers to the past use of the fiber. As I've stated in the previous lecture of the wool of, of, of this lecture talking about wool quality, you know, quality is based on the fiber fineness um, and length. Um, but it's also based on things such as uh, color and cleanliness and you know freedom from damage caused by um, by the environment that the sheep was raised in or in the processing process right and you know ranchers do take great care in ensuring that factors produce the best quality wool however they can't control everything right and you know for coarser uh, fibers of, uh, of wool, they they tend to if they're used for an apparel item, they tend to you know cause a little irritation, be a little prick, prickly, and that often occurs in, in wool garments. Um, I own, <laughs> and many people have got, either own or have come across an itchy wool sweater. It's warm, but it's itchy, so you just put something underneath it, right? Um, but really, you know, quality, the best quality uh, wools are are white. You know, they're clean. Um, they are, they're long, they're, the fibers themselves are long, they're free of defects, and they can't contain those small diameter, those, those smaller microns um, in, in their structure. Um, the Federal Trade Commission also defines uh, super wools, right? So claiming to have uh, a super fine wool um, content means that they must meet really strict guidelines um, really strict guidelines for fiber size and go back and refer to that micron chart because there are some super fine wools on there so manufacturers that sell clothing or household items that contains wool have to comply with the wool products labeling act and um, it's not even new it was first enacted in, in 1939 when folks started you know blending and making manu making manufactured uh, fibers and this act states that products must be actually accurately labeled to reflect the item's fiber content, the country of origin, and the, the registered name um, that's issued by the FTC from the manufacturer uh, or the marketer.